Patience Nzokwa is the actor's actor. Her name is so popular among many generations of Nigerians and her interpretation of her roles have gotten her both stigmatized and stand simultaneously. She's been awarded numerous times. In 2012 and 2013, she won Best Supporting Actor at the African Movie Academy Award. Mama G isn't slowing down anytime soon. On this Rubbing Mind International Women's Month special, we speak to Mama G on her journey to where she is now. Lipton is raising a mug to her. Wow, what an absolute honor. It's so nice to finally meet you in person, Ma. I, have, I grew up watching you on TV, you know? <laughs> so when I was told that I was going to interview you, I just kept saying to myself, I get to meet Mama G. Um, Ma, that, that make me feel I'm too old. <laughs> You look amazing, you know, and it, it kind of shows that you haven't, you've been in this game for a while. You started very young. Very early. You know, so tell me a little bit about that experience and what even, you know, made you decide that you wanted to go into entertainment. Because you wear so many different hats. Mm. Actually, from childhood, you know, a lot of people say, I started acting when I was small. No, I found myself doing what I'm doing, even when I'm with my family. So it wasn't difficult for them to accept me as an actor. And when they discovered I had interests. So I didn't have a lot of people fighting me not to go. You know, then it was a taboo for women to come out then. That was why you find a lot of people who, uh, some, some women who started early, mm -hmm. as either they started outside the country okay. or they started uh, with makeup. And when they look for women to take up some roles they can't find, they ask them to come and take it. Mm. And from there, they became stars and abandoned the makeup or costume they came to do. I said, doing that, so they were the, actually the people that laid the foundation mm -hmm. and then encouraged us women, others, to come out. Mm. It was like then, you know, if you play football, they'll give you a range. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you couldn't find a lot of women going into it, but now you can see the flood. It's amazing. Uh, yes. When you first started, did you think that you were going to stay in it long? Was it like, you, did you believe that you could make a livelihood from it and it would be actually with I career? started by just doing what I enjoyed doing because mm. I couldn't even get myself to go for an audition. So when they told me they came down to Enugu, they are at first hotel, they are doing auditions, I said, me, crowd things, line up and wait. I didn't have the patience at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Somehow, you know, the paths of the righteous are ordered by God. Right. So God ordered my path by uh, just making things difficult for me in life. Okay. And somehow, my cousin that was in the same class with me in Israel now saw what I was going through to raise my children. My husband was very sick, you know, right. down with um, diabetes and uh, hypertension. So he was always having, you know, crisis. So he couldn't help much in raising the children. I was struggling, doing whatever my hand could, I could lay my hands on to help the children. My cousin now said, you have to go to Chief Zebudai Okori Gwengobo, his office. Mm -hmm. They need somebody. And I now remember that he worked with Radio Nigeria as an announcer. Maybe you could do something for him. I quickly went there. The team came from Lagos. I don't even know who they are up to now. The team came from Lagos. And when they saw Zebudai was not there, they said, ah, maybe you are the one we are waiting for. I said, I don't know who you are waiting for. Mm -hmm. They said, give us, they gave me a script I read. They said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, you go. Can you get us um, an Igbo rapper? And I said, yeah, right. I have a lot of them. They said, go get it. How long will it take? I said, 45 one, a minutes, one hour. I said, go. I rushed, got it from my house. That I didn't need to go and borrow from <laughs> anybody. Uh, they said, ah, you are ready? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I they said, so when I came, people were saying, ah, where is this one from? Because I never went there. Mm -hmm. That was how they picked me. And from there, the man that played my husband in that short um, advert, when he was commissioned to do a 13 episode of One Soap for NTA, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he came looking for me. And he came with Zebediah himself. That's uh, Chief, uh, Chief Chick of Allah. Mm -hmm. They came to my house because they had to go and drop me off after the shoes. I said, we want to know where you live so that whenever we need you, we come and call you. So he came and picked me. I wasn't even there when he came. Mm -hmm. He dropped a note and drew the map of how I, would, I was going to locate them. Yeah. So as soon as I came back from school, then they, they, uh, they, I went to read further. And then I was doing my job program. They said, they came to look for you. I, said, I took up the saw the, I ran. I left the food I wanted to eat. Yeah. Looked for them. That was how yeah. I got into the, the film industry. 
everybody, ah, this is lovely. Where have you been? I said, I've been in my house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's, it's one of the things where it just came so naturally to you. And, you. you know, the minute you got on screen, everyone wanted to have it. I didn't even know there was anything like stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> because on radio, right. you just do what, what no you can, you know. And, uh, and that was how I got into the industry without knowing what was involved, uh, what I should do and what I shouldn't do. I came and I started studying because I'm someone that loves to study my environment, right. study people around, know who to relate with and who to give space and things like that. So that's how the path of life took me into the industry. Right. And oh. that's why when, I even be, when people started noticing me, I didn't even know why. Right. I, I didn't see what I was doing that was different from what mm -hmm. others were mm -hmm. doing. So. All right, we're going to go on a quick break. We'll be right back after this. For this International Women's Month, they ask people to join the conversation using the hashtag raise a mug to raise a mug to that special person in their lives. And this is powered by Lipton. Stanley Ike Chuku raised the mug to Ike Dinobi Favor. This is a rubbing mind special for International Women's Month powered by Lipton. You know, I want to talk about, you know, the portrayal and the a lot of the characters that you play on TV. I mean, I don't know anyone that plays a wicked mother in law better than you. <laughs> it is, you know, and the thing about it is you do it so well. Like, when I watch it, I'm just like, God, my chest. What do you think happened that, you know, directors kept calling you over and over again for that role? Um, and how do you think that has affected you personally? Uh, at, a, uh, at a stage, I thought it was going to affect me negatively. Okay. But rather, it endeared me to, you know, that's when you do, you know, I have to quote the Bible here. In Jeff chapter 4, he said, every good gift comes from God. Right. So mine led me to the hearts of people. They wanted to know who is doing all this. Even those who went to school with me, they never knew I could do such things because they knew... I am a very emotional person. So when they saw me doing it, they started calling. Patience, I can't believe this. So yeah. <laughs> I have to tell people that you're not like that too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they became my advocate, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, I think the thing comes from inside. And, but I know that I'm one person that anything I want to do, I want to do the best okay. I know of it. So I get, to, I get to do anything so that nobody will fault me anywhere. So that, that passion has always led me to doing things right. When things were really hard, when I was retrenched from Radio Nigeria, I went into, because I did home economics mm -hmm. in school, I went into small, small chops, bakery and things like that, wedding cakes, and it really helped me. My husband was sick and I got married at a very tender age. So I needed to, I didn't like begging anybody for anything. Right. So I always wanted to stand on my own. Mm -hmm. I hated to beg anybody for anything. Mm. So all that led me into, oh, is he moving now? I'm going to do it well. Right. So that nobody will say, why didn't you do it this way? That was what led me. Yeah. And I thank God he, he, he empowered me. Yeah, yeah. It's been an amazing journey. And like you said, the stardom is out of this world. You know, I always say that I don't know if there's anyone on the continent of Africa and globally that wouldn't <laughs> recognize you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of the industry because you've been part of it for so long and That's right. you, know, you have seen so many different changes. Mm -hmm. um, compared to when you first started and now, you know, what would you say there are some, what are the good parts about it and what are some parts that you hope to see change? I'm still trying to find out the good things about it. When we started, you, your hard work takes you to anywhere. By this time, it's even difficult for people to give you opportunity to show what you can do. Everything's all about money, 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 money. Some who are even good, they price themselves out of market. But in our own case, we didn't bother about money. We didn't even know there was so much money in the industry. But we just did what we enjoyed doing. You don't go for an audition and they give you a role and then you, you, you didn't do it because they didn't pay you enough, no. For the fact that you were giving that role, gives you power to showcase what you can. And me, I believe from the onset, when I saw the typical, I learned the industry, what is there and what shouldn't be there. And I knew there were things that you look out for, okay. stardom, 
and finance. Mm -hmm. I knew that if I pursued finance from early, early experiences I had, mm -hmm. if you pursue finance, it gets to a point and it stops because mm -hmm. nothing backs it up from outside. Mm -hmm. But if, if you get stardom, it will carry on. The finance will come on its own and you will be placed there and by the goodwill of people who watch your movies, you will be there. Even if I don't do movies now for six months, I'm not coming back as a new face. I'm still coming back as Patience or Mama G, mm -hmm. G for general. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mama G, you're, you're actually a vibe. You're just a mood. <laughs> uh, so in your opinion, you feel like actors need to do it for the craft? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you, feel, do, you, do you feel like, because I had a conversation uh, earlier, I had a conversation on another episode with um, Jocke Silva, Auntie Jocke, and she talked about how... My senior. Yeah, she said <laughs> that, you know, she feels like the industry does not respect the actors as much in terms of valuing them. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Because, you know, you're saying that actors should do it for the craft and not for the, the money. For, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They have uh, really brought us down to a level where I can go. Uh, and I think part of the reason is from us. Okay. Because if they give me a role to play, and they know that patients will do well on that role, and I reject it because they're not paying me much, somebody else will go for less and take it up. Hmm. You know, this is hmm. what is killing the industry. I see what you're saying. But if you give it to me, for the fact that you know that I'm going to play well, on this role, you, wouldn't, you that is giving me the job won't even look at how much you're paying me. Mm. Because entertainment is unquantifiable. Right. It's like going to the market now. Mm -hmm. You find tomatoes, broken ones, mm. and you have to find the fresh one. Mm. Because of money, you go for the broken ones. You are bound to catch disease from those ones. Mm. But the fresh one would have taken you to a healthy life. So that is what it is. If you abandon a, 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 um, an actor because of the money, you could just go on, talk yourself into bringing the actor because you had him or her in mind before. Why writing the script even? Right. That person is bound to give you what you want. Mm -hmm. And when the movie comes out, all the stress about money and the working, all the stress would have been forgotten. It's like somebody who is in labor pain. Mm -hmm. As soon as you have your baby, you forget the pains. Yes, yes. Uh, so the outcome of the movie, because you use, use the right person, will make you forget the pain of shooting and producing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand what you're saying. I want to talk about the kind of roles that you're choosing now. Because <laughs> I've seen there's a lot of diversity, you know, you're doing a lot more comedy as well. Um, do you still find yourself being drawn to the wicked mother-in-law typecast? Or have you found that these days you're like, mm. It's okay, I've done enough of that. No, I can never do enough of anything. <laughs> <laughs> and a good actor should be elastic. Okay. Anything they give you to do, you do it well. Yeah. That's my belief. So whether it's comedy, I do comedy well. I know what comedy needs for me to make people laugh, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I go for it. If it's the strong one, like being who I am in the that they know me for. Yeah. That's why she, she's she, so she has, she has nigger. <laughs> she has nigger does what even yeah. as a governor, he still do, does what he, he knows best how to yeah. do. I would do that. It's just like a, a medical doctor. You, you, uh, you measure in uh, gynecology. That doesn't stop you from treating children mm -hmm. at some point. So uh, measuring in wickedness you know, that does not mean that I cannot do others because I'm elastic by God's grace. Right, and yes. you're an actor. It's not who you are yes, yes. fundamentally. Yes. What kind of advice would you give? Because, you know, I find it very fascinating, your perspective on the industry. What kind of advice would you give to the newer actors? If you're here to act, act. Mm. Don't run lines. Lines are there for you mm. to guard you so that you'll not deviate from the storyline. But do the act. The writer has done his own. Find out the mind of the writer and then bring it out and even add more to it. Because if I give you a goosey to cook a goose soup, that's not enough. You need oil. You need the, 
all the spices and things like that, and even meat. So you, as an actor, it is for you to now add those things to make the agusi soup come out fine. Yeah. So my role must be delivered in such a way that nobody else can give better than what I have given. Right. You see, so I urge the new actors, don't depend on makeup. Don't depend on what you're wearing. All those things will come. There are people who are paid to do that. We have costumiers. It is their duty to costume you to go with the story, mm. the role you are playing. The, the um, um, location manager to bring location mm -hmm. that suits the, the act. Right. So your own, you also bring it out. Don't wait for people to do your work. Or you want to, you know, some people, most people now they come, they want to make themselves up as if makeup is what you're going to see or the dress you're wearing is what they're going to see. No. And then you forget the main thing, which is the act itself. Mm -hmm. So the act is what makes you who you are. This has been International Women's Month special with Rubbing Minds. My name is Bella Lee. We'll be right back after this. Empress Cindy Natosi raised the mark to Angela Wonsu. This is a Rubbing Minds special for International Women's Month powered by Lipton. You know, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you talked earlier about how you were married at such a young age. Um, what led to that? Was that a decision that you made yourself? Did you fall, you know? You no, know? It, was, it was my parents' decision. Okay. Uh, you know, I come from a polygamous family where uh, my, my mother's mate, the daughter gets married, and my mother wants her own daughter to, to get married. And then the, the one that presented himself then, they said I couldn't wait for my love. <laughs> then, uh, uh, I was forced into marriage, that's it. Yeah, and what was, your, what was the experience like being married so young? It was horrible. When, you know, our own time was a time where you don't have to decide who marries you. Your parents could arrange it, your cousin, your, you know, anybody can arrange the marriage and once your parents have accepted it, you are mm. in for it. Mm. Yes. Was it an experience where you grew into loving your husband or was it, would you say it was more of just a companionship? No. Uh, uh, well, both. But, but when you're trying to please your parents, because in our, in our family, you don't come back from your husband's place. Yeah. You stay, manage it, make the best out of it. So when, when I came in, I saw what was involved. I put my head, because I couldn't disappoint my father who loved me so much. Mm. So I had to stay back. Mm. And once you start having children, in my place, it's not easy for you to abandon your children. And, 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 so I had to stay. Okay. The reason I stayed and carried it was one, to please my family, second to take care of my children. Mm. So whether there was love or not, does not matter. You know, earlier you talked a little bit about how your commitment and your need to be able to take care of your children was what inspired you to find whatever you could put your hands to. That's right. How were you able, where did you find that resilience and that strength to raise your children while you're in so many ways being the financial um, breadwinner for your family? When you discover that the man is already sick with uh, Secular disease, terminal disease. You, you even have to battle with training the children and then helping him out. He's your husband, you can't deny it. Yeah. And you must do your duty as a wife. And coming from a Christian background, we are not allowed to divorce. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that uh, gave me the courage to really do what I could to. Uh, I, I remember the first time he went into coma. Mm. When he came back, he recovered and he said, if anybody told him I was going to be able to take care of him like that, he wouldn't believe. I said, why? But you're my husband. Mm. So everybody thought I was going to, at a time, bust out and say, I'm done with this. But I couldn't because I, I have my family to protect and I have my children to take care of. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, it's interesting because I'm listening to you. There's a very different sense of duty that I feel like my generation has now. What are your thoughts on the way marriage is you know, are being appearing to seem. Uh, do you feel like there's some room for change or do you prefer this new generation where people have their own agency to pick and choose how they marry? That is not marriage for me. That is just relationship that could be broken any time. But for me, marriage is forever, till death do us part. And I don't care what I meet in it. And that's the way I brought up my children and that's what I'm looking out for. And by God's grace, with prayers, it's working out for me. Mm. I watched them and there was a time in, in, I went to UK to see my daughter and then my, my daughter behaved. So I said, 
I don't know why you, Choma, should behave like that. The husband said, no, 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 mommy. Choma did not do anything. I felt so ashamed of myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see? So uh, what we have today baffles me. And uh, I feel for the children that they are giving birth to. Because I don't know how they will learn something better from their parents. Right. You know, so we are praying for this generation and the generation to come. That is our duty as good mothers, to pray for them. Because without our prayers, I mean, what you see today is a child's play. Hmm. In future, it will be worse. Hmm. And that's what we don't want to hear. I don't want my generation yet to come to ever have that kind of problem. So I started to pray for it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Very insightful. Um, I want to talk about the children. You know, you mentioned raising children, and I know you have five children, and some of them are four. four. Uh, the kind of adoption I do okay. is, I discovered that each time we went to any place, especially in those remote areas, went to shoot, you see children who are interested in the movie, they just go with us. Mm. And when we come to the hotel where we stay, you see them loitering about. You talk and talk and talk. They hide when they see you. You go. The next thing you hear that one of them is pregnant, mm -hmm. and I will make sure that they don't abort those children. So when I pick them up, I take care of them until they give birth. When these children grow up, you can take your child and go. So it's not like proper adoption. Right. Their mothers stay, and I take care of them. And then when they want to go, they go. Some of them, some of them go and come back. The children come back and stay with me. And I pay their school fees by God's grace. Because yeah. I want to see those children. You don't know what they're going to be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And some of these women, when they want to throw them away because of the stress, they discover that in future they need them. They still come back to pick them up. Yeah. So I just take care of those children for as long as I can. You have such an interesting legacy. And it, it's so beautiful to see, you know, I'm really, I like the perspective that you're giving because I feel like, my generation is quite one-tracked and one-minded. Um, I want to find out from you, when it comes to this Women's Month theme, I choose to challenge. What are you choosing to challenge? I'm going to continue to pick up single mothers from the street, from anywhere. That's a challenge because nobody thinks about them. Mm. Some of these single mothers, they find it difficult to even eat how much more. And a hungry man is an angry man. And they could go on sleeping with anybody they see to get one naira, two naira, to even buy small, small chores for the children. Mm -hmm. And so I, I still want to look, continue to look into their case. Mm -hmm. And I also want to have um, some of them who can't take care of their children, have them as long as they can stay with me. I'll keep doing it mm -hmm. until death do us part. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I can't leave those children because... A lot of them are taking care of me now. <laughs> <laughs> because when they call and say, mommy, mommy yeah. I feel happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, cha the, challenge, the challenge there is to see that the right things are done at the right time and at the right places. And if you don't, in my, in my, in my dialect they say, if you don't throw away, you cannot pick. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to throw away is picking them up. If I had to eat, like two eggs in a week, I mean, forfeit some weeks mm -hmm. of egg to have enough to help these children. And then when I see those of them who are interested in going to school, but because of money, I still go to their families mm -hmm. and give them. They could stay with their parents. Mm. I give what I can to them. It's not every time, yeah. once in a while. For you single mothers, it's not easy. I know what exactly you are going through because even those of us who had our husbands, they were sick. We are like single mothers because we are doing things alone without help. Don't worry. If it is pencil that you bought for your son or your daughter, don't worry. It will come back to you. The Bible says, throw, the, throw your bread into the waters. After many days, it will surface again. So I urge you to work hard. Look for something to do. Don't depend on what people give to you. Struggle. I struggled to get to where I am today. It was not easy. I don't have time to say things about that. But struggle, find something to do, no matter how small. I fried buns, puff puff, to make both ends meet. So I, as for widows, you know, some of us became widows bef before our husbands died. But now, our children are taking care of us. Last, my last birthday, my children bought a car for me, you see? If I had abandoned them, maybe they would have become armed robbers and things that I wouldn't want to hear. But today, because of the struggle, 
I didn't look at anybody's face. I didn't go to anybody's house, though. I will go to uh, even trade fair centers and buy stands, cook rice, cook and sell. I was able to make it. It's all hard work. It's all hard work. The strength is there. God has given, God knows that at this time that you'll be who you are today. And he knows where he's taking you. So pick up the strength and the calling that God has given to you. Move on. Let nobody outside even know what you're going through with those children. Because the children are watching you. And they'll be proud of you tomorrow. My children are so proud of me today. And I'm proud of them because they listen to me. But if you deviate, I don't know what will come out of it. And you may not like it. Thank you so much, Mamaji, for sitting down and talking. It was such an honor to meet you. Thank you. Um, you truly are just a beautiful experience. And I just <laughs> had such a good time talking with you. This has been International Women's Month special with Rubbing Minds. My name is Balanli. We'll be right back after this. Don't just stand there teasing me Now it's time to show